Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan 111, coming at you from a world that has nothing in it. It is completely devoid of life, it's completely devoid of anything, except for one armor stand that I'll quickly go ahead and point out down there. But it's devoid of any life, it's just an infinite plane of wool. And I would like to change that, I would like to bring some life to this world. And so I shall run a game rule, a game loop function. Conway colon life, so that we can start running Conway's Game of Life. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you can check the description for uh, a lot of links, or at least a link that talks all about how Conway's Game of Life runs. Uh, but the basic idea is we have a grid of cells where each cell can be either alive or dead, a black cell or a white cell. And the live cells, basically, if they have two or three neighbors, they will stay alive. If they have one or fewer neighbors, they will die of loneliness. And if they have four or more neighbors, they will die of overcrowding. And furthermore, new cells can be born. If there's an empty spot that has three neighboring live cells, exactly three, then in the next iteration, a new cell will be born into that particular slot. And so those are all the rules, basically rules for when cells stay alive when they have two or three neighbors, and rules for when cells die, when they die of loneliness or die of overcrowding, and rules for when new cells can be born when they're next to exactly three other cells. And that's all there is, and nevertheless you end up with some rather complex behavior that can evolve from a very simple starting configuration. And so the five black cells that I put down at the beginning were an example of something known as a Methuselah, which is basically just a life configuration that runs for a large number of iterations and has very complex behavior before it settles down into a steady state pattern. Some of those steady state patterns can be things like these little groups of three that just kind of alternate back and forth as well as things like these gliders that will kind of run off into space for forever. <laughs> I guess forever is maybe, you know, too big of a word. We're inside Minecraft, and so there's a finite, you know, size of chunks that are actually loaded in this world, and so uh, Minecraft is only going to simulate the loaded chunks. Um, but we can do all the simulation, and we can do it kind of at a reasonable pace. Uh, I'm trying to draw a new frame of the life iteration every two game ticks. And if I pull up F3, um, we're still getting... Yeah, we're still getting 60 frames a second. And you can see also up there on the fourth line, uh, up over here, that we only have one entity in the world. And that's actually, that's one of the interesting things that I want to leave kind of as a puzzle for those folks who do stuff with Minecraft command blocks and who maybe have done Conway's Game of Life simulations before. It's, in the past, it's been relatively straightforward either to do a simulation that uses lots of entities, kind of like one entity for every live square. And I've actually uh, done that myself before. I'll have a link in the description to an old Conway Life video that I did back in Minecraft 1.9 that used uh, entities in order to kind of like track all of the live cells. Um, or you could avoid using entities if you had just a finite grid, if you just had like a certain area where you were gonna run the life si simulation uh, and that was all you could do. I, I haven't showed off by the fact by the way, I can pause it uh, by not holding the redstone block. And so holding the redstone block actually like makes the whole simulation run. Uh, and if I scroll away from the redstone, that will kind of like stop simulating for the moment, uh, which is also interesting. Um, yeah, so you could either do bounded life simulations or you could do uh, life uh, using entities. But I am only using one entity and I have an unbounded grid like these gliders are going and flying off to infinity. And that would have been pretty hard to code before, at least with any kind of performance. Uh, and so I'm curious to know if people can guess or can figure out how I've pulled this off, if you're someone who's a command block programmer. Um, so command block programmers, here's a puzzle for you. <laughs> Replicate what you have seen in this video. Uh, and if you do, then I will, I will <laughs> have extra respect for you. I don't know. It's very hard to tell beforehand how difficult the puzzle is going to be. Uh, maybe a number of people will figure this out, or maybe people will not be able to figure it out and wonder for a while. I'm not sure. But in any case, um, in any case, I am also I'm playing in pre four one twelve dash pre four in the first line. So pre release four came out, and they finally fixed some bugs. This is the first pre release where you can really do a fair amount of stuff with functions. Um, 
without major pieces of the command functionality kind of not working and being broken. And yeah, so I'm continuing to play around with lots of ideas and different things. Here's Conway's Game of Life. It's a new type of implementation using a different implementation strategy. We finally reached steady state. All of these things are never going to grow, and we still have the gliders off in the distance. Anyway, if you can replicate these results, it could be a fun challenge as just some way to take advantage of some of the new features that we have in the pre-releases with Minecraft functions. So uh, for those of you who enjoy such challenges, uh, go for it and leave a comment if you manage to do it. I hope, as always, that you guys are having a great day, and I will see you again soon with more cool Minecraft command creations. Bye-bye.